you have arrived at part two, video two, Beyond Face to Face. Welcome to your new normal remote office, sponsored by this software. Brought on by the fourth industrial revolution. Now let's get started on video two. Microsoft Teams, as we saw, Microsoft Teams uh, is, is geared towards more of the uh, team collaboration uh, type setups. It didn't initially have the video, now it has video. Um, so Microsoft Teams, I mean, Microsoft has always has great products. So Microsoft Teams has great team collaboration platform with a familiar company, Microsoft. Reports 20 million active users per day and about 44 million members total. Its target is on Slack since their platforms are very similar. Something about the Slack platform and how when I read about Microsoft and their particular stock portfolio and, and some of the um, some of the research that's done about them, when they talk about the company and their growth, they always have this lean toward Slack as being kind of their um, mirror of sorts or their protege um, kind of like Apple and, and Samsung, you know, Apple came out with iPhone, Samsung came out with their um, galaxy. One thing that did happen, even though iPhone maybe sold so many more, but galaxy uh, start to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade because of the competition. And so that second mover advantage basically took them over the top after uh, a few years of trailing behind. So I think Slack is in the same position. Microsoft is a leader because of the name and because of what they've done as far as PCs. But at the same time, Slack is up and coming. They're observing, they're taking hints and, and ideas and they're really growing and they're in a position to really grow. Now, they may not be the only one uh, because there's a couple other ones that are in position to grow as well. Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams, like I said, has over 44 million members uh, and they are revamping their systems as well. And they have actual ads out that kind of compares them to Slack and why they're better. Google Meet or Google Hangouts. I use Google Hangouts a lot back in the day and I thought it was a great platform. So Google Hangouts will always be in the mix when it comes to all things media. That's what Alphabet, you know, their parent company does is digital, is online. They are always going to be in the mix. With 100 to 150 million education users worldwide, they're averaging about 2 million new members daily to their platform. And their strategy is working, focusing on education. That is a great strategy. And as you know, they have the Chromebook which is under Google or Alphabet. And with the Chromebook, they have uploaded already, they have um, apps that are there. So of course, the Google Hangout, Google Meet is probably already part of the Google Classroom. And so you have this marriage made in heaven for Google or Alphabet. So they're gonna get market share just because of having that one-stop shop. So Google Meet, the video conferencing service by Google is getting a major feature upgrade. The company says it wants to make sure people have the much requested features amid the coronavirus. So it is adding the top requested features to Google Meet. The new features include AI enhanced low light mode, tab focused presentation mode, and noise cancellation. Google has also announced that it is expanding their tile layout for larger calls. If you, I mean, think about that. That is some insight into what the people want and need. If you look at any platform, even Zoom, if your lighting is not correct, then you struggle to to uh, to get that to work on screen. And and I have a lot of challenges with that. But I have like five lights, and and I'm probably just don't have them in the right position. But hey, they're here. You can see me, so we we making it happen. But what's interesting is they hit on everything that, to me, makes sense to help enhance the recording that some novice would not know how or what to do. 
So now you don't have to because you got AI enhanced, low light mode, tab focus presentation mode, and noise cancellation. So all the things that cause problems in a video, they basically have gotten rid of. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm looking forward to that platform and I'll, I'll have to check it out when it comes out. So in addition to those, we have one of my favorites, WebEx, under Cisco's WebEx. The video conferencing app recorded 324 million users in March and more than double their user growth in the U.S. With average, with the average of 22 million meetings per week in March alone, and overall growth in Europe and Asia was four times since December 2019, has quadrupled since December 2019. Wow. In order to win more members from Zoom and Microsoft, Cisco has added new features and made useful enhancements. Noting that a convergent with a, a convergence with Alphabet's Google Meet and acquisition of new AI-powered voice intelligence technology, this will give it the edge it needs over its competition. See, WebEx superior security options and its end-to-end -end encryption capabilities are likely to aid Cisco to expand its presence in the enterprise video conferencing market and ultimately take it, take it, take more market share. This is the beyond face-to-face -face that I'm talking about when it comes to video conferencing and platforms that are in competition to give you the best products for what you need to do. And so as we go on and on and on into this shelter in place, this lockdown, this remote work, then we are going to have some of the greatest tools to work with. And speaking of tools and great and amazing and FOMO or fear of missing out, there's Facebook Rooms. Yep, Messenger Rooms. Not Facebook Live, not WeChat, not WhatsApp, not IGTV. No, 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 no. This is Facebook putting on a show for the rest of the world to see. In a press release by Facebook on April 24th, yes, that was yesterday, Facebook is launching Facebook or Messenger Rooms. I guess WeChat, WhatsApp, and Facebook Live wasn't moving the needle in the right direction for the future. So FOMO, fear of missing out, set in. And Mark Zuckerberg, he took action. You know, he went into a room, probably grabbed all the head folks and said, look, we got to do something about this because... With Zoom running at seven hundred percent plus, their market, uh, their, their 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 stock is is growing leaps and bounds from one hundred to over to one hundred and sixty in three months. Yeah, I could see Facebook saying we definitely got to do something about this. So what they've done is they've come up with messenger rooms, and with the features from both Zoom and other video chat type platforms. Facebook Messenger Rooms are joinable group video calls, which anyone can start right from their messenger or from their Facebook profile or group page. You can invite anyone to join, even if they don't have a Facebook account. So I guess that's probably the catch. Currently, it is capped at eight users per room, but will soon increase to 50 with no limit. So Facebook, and I was reading, uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you the um, the press release in a minute, but Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg talks about using AR and VR, augmented reality and, and virtual reality. He talked to their virtual reality division, the ones that created the video communication device portal that you've seen Jennifer Lopez and some other folks um, um, in the commercial about. They were working on a collaboration with Zoom um, since January 2020. And they wanted to work with Zoom and see if they could have their portal device, the video communication device, where it could integrate making Zoom calls through their particular device. And so they are already working on collaboration. But I think after three months of massive growth with Zoom has, has had, um, somewhere in that PR, it talked about how Zoom has put that particular collaboration on hold until they get the security piece in order. 
I think they're not in a hurry to partner with you, Facebook, because they're killing it right now. So um, let's talk about Facebook. So as you know, Facebook has their platform. So let's go and look at their platform. And let's see, where's my Facebook? So Facebook, they're, they actually yesterday they had a, uh, they put out a press release. And in their press release, introducing messenger rooms and more ways to connect when you're apart. You know, Facebook is all about connecting. And we can't argue that with over a billion accounts out there every single day, all day, and I see them all the time, Facebook is a leader in social media. And it was just a matter of time that they enhanced their offering in the video conferencing, video collaboration, real-time space. Now, I believe the FOMO, I mean, the fear of missing out kicked in. And Mark Zuckerberg probably got his, his executives in an iron and said, look, we need to do something about this and we need to do it quick because Zoom is taking over the top spot and not letting it go. And with Facebook being in the top spot from social media with Instagram and WhatsApp, I mean, Snapchat, I mean, they could not allow this to happen. But what are they going to do, right? Zoom has the best and the simplest platform for anybody to use, and you can do it for free. So some of the things that are talked about here, and I'll, I mean, I won't go through all this. You can look at it, you know, you can go to Facebook's page and check it out. Um, but like I said, they up to, you know, they'll hold up to 50 people on a chat. Um, you can see some of the vision visuals here, um, pretty much kind of like your, your Zoom. I mean, video conferencing is video conferencing, right? Um, so one of the things they talk about doing is um, soon they will add ways to create rooms from Instagram Direct, WhatsApp, and their portal. So they're working on not just Facebook Messenger, but taking it to some of the other uh, social media platforms that they own as well. A lot of people use WhatsApp and a lot of people use Instagram. So I think that'll be very valuable, especially with Instagram, because it's seems like it's kind of challenging to do more than just quick hits and one minute um, IGTV type stuff. Uh, so let's 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 look at some of this right here. So if your friends or communities create rooms that are open to you, you'll see them on Facebook. So you can find things to do and people can hang out with you. When you're invited to a room, you can join from your phone or computer. No need to download anything to get started because you already got Facebook and you already got Messenger. With the Messenger app, you can play with AR effects like bunny ears, kind of like the Snapchats type stuff. New AI-powered features like immersive 360 backgrounds and mood lighting. That's pretty cool. When you create a room, you choose who can see and join it. You can remove people from the call and lock a room if you don't want anyone else to enter. So read more about the controls you have and how we built Messenger Rooms with privacy and security in mind. Messenger Rooms is rolling out in some countries this week and will expand to the rest of the world in the coming weeks. So that's pretty much about Messenger Rooms. That's how it's going to look and um, pretty cool. The new live features for Facebook, Instagram, and Portal. And so there will be some, some things happening there, kind of one-on-one, uh, get access. Okay, okay. Yeah, looks pretty cool. And Instagram, they're going to create that. Okay, okay. Not bad, not bad. They put something together for us there. Okay. But it'll give you an opportunity to use whatever platform you want that uh, Facebook owns to go ahead and maximize um, the use of that particular tool. Messenger Kids, global expansion and new features. Hmm, that's interesting. So Messenger Kids can help kids stay in touch with your friends and family in a fun, apparently uh, supervised environment. We started expanding the free video calling and messaging app to more than 70 countries and add new options to help parents connect kids with their friends. Okay. All right. All right. We've got the dating app. and uh, But yeah, you can definitely take a look at that and, you know, see what you like about it. If you like Facebook, um, and it's just a matter of, it's a social chat. Um, 
you know, I, I, I took some notes. Um, Mark Zuckerberg talked about on his platform, um, they compared it to Zoom. He says, no, it's not Zoom. This is kind of an ad hoc um, presence where it's a little more relaxed, where anybody can just be strolling by and if they see join me, if they see get access and they're one of your friends on Facebook, they can click it. They can come into a room. You may be having a conversation with somebody else, but they can just walk in and have that conversation with you. So a little different from Zoom, you got to have, you know, the access code and all this. But with this particular platform, it's a little more relaxed. Uh, like I said, kind of like um, standing around a water cooler at work. You're in an area, you and two or three, you know, comrades are talking. Somebody walks into the break room or near the, the water cooler and want to join the conversation. And, it, and the collaborations happen right there. So I think that's a pretty interesting uh, way to do it and a pretty good platform. So before I close out, I want to hit you with a good um, rundown of some of the best conferencing software according to Digital Project Manager website. Um, they do highlight some of the ones that we've talked about. And, and I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what is offered and and why they matter, basically. Some of the best video conferencing software out there, Cisco, WebEx, Meeting, Adobe Connect, Microsoft Teams, Join Me, I think is horrible. Global Meet collaboration, whereby Skype for Business used to be Microsoft Teams. Now Microsoft Teams has incorporated that. Google Hangouts and Riber. And they actually see you. And see, even here, they talk about what is the best free online meeting software. If you're working on a tight budget, here are some free teleconferencing tools you can rely on. Like I said before, there's a lot of things that are being offered for free. There's got free upgrades. You're talking about the premium memberships that are uh, free for two or three months or weeks or, or six months sometimes. And um, so you can look at Google Hangouts, Zoom, the free plan, Skype free conferencing calling, free conference calling, go to meeting is free, Apple FaceTime, Uber Conference, True Conference Online, Slack, video calls, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. All of these are free and you can try them out, check them out, get familiar with it. Um, I know a lady, Linda West on um, Facebook, good friend of mine here in San Diego. She is, she's done over 3,000 uh, Facebook Lives, so she is really good at it, and, and she really uh, knows how to, to show you how to maximize the, the use of that tool. So overviews on the best online meeting software and hardware. So let me tell you, um, here are the top 10 that they have picked. Um, not necessarily my top 10, but just to give you an idea of what these offer. Uh, Cisco WebEx, video conferencing with easy buy link invites and personal profile so you can learn about people you're calling in real time. Um, it has a free model, a free version of it, free membership. And right now they're offering unlimited or up to a hundred um, attendees access and hosts um, in their free plan right now. So you can definitely take advantage of that. And only $13.50 a month if you want to do that. You meeting. You meeting seems to be a pretty decent one, $29.99 per month. Uh, virtual meeting software that focuses on streamlining invitation tools, mobile connections, interruption, muting, and more. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you can check that out if you like. Uh, they have a freemium version of the software. Maximum time is 30 minutes per meeting. Uh, a little less ideal for important corporate discussions, but it's a good test run there for a free video conference software before you start paying $30 a month, which is $360 a year, just so you know. Um, Adobe Connect. Adobe Connect, um, definitely great for digital training, webinars, web class, master class, um, substitute for um, kind of an in-house training. Uh, they have a depth of, of, of options and tools that give you that real feel of a, of a uh, um, online collaboration or online training tool, more of an online training tool, less of a face-to-face um, uh, uh, -face, uh, collaboration. It's more 
here's the training and here's the options and you can hear me speaking. You can type in chat and reply kind of like your Facebook live type setup, but more robust for actual training environment. Uh, this is used at the corporate level. Uh, $50 a month is not going to be for your average person. I don't recommend it. It's a big learning curve to try to use something like that. We do use it at work, but uh, definitely won't use it at home. Microsoft Teams, we talked about already. Uh, great platform, uh, great for video calling, text chat, file sharing, and lots of great collaboration. Uh, Microsoft Teams can't go wrong uh, there. Join me. Yes, I've had a membership with Join Me for years. I used it extensively um, in my marketing business um, a few years ago. And at a point, I had so much trouble with that platform and people calling from over in um, South Africa, Ghana, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia. Uh, it became very difficult and, and they couldn't get on. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice, um, good API for um, uh, integration of other, other platforms, but I just had a lot of problems with it, so I don't recommend it. Global Meet Collaboration. This was interesting. Um, it's a no-download video conferencing solution with a freemium plan that allows up to 125 participants in HD video. Now, that sounds really good, easy to get on, uh, no download, uh, but let me let me hit you up with the problem here. The problem is that at sixteen dollars per user, not sixteen dollars a month overall, it's per user. So each person that joins has to pay sixteen dollars every time they get on per month. So Global Meet tends to be quite costly compared to others on the list. They are certainly a feature-rich tool, but many functions can be found elsewhere for cheaper. Yeah, bad trick. Whereby, this seems pretty, pretty cool. Easy to use video meeting tool that works right in your browser of choice with a free plan. Now, what's interesting about this is they launched in 2013 and they were bought out in 2017. So ain't that cool. The integrations with Google Docs, Trello Boards, YouTube, and Slack. Like I said, Slack is integrated with everybody. And like I said, if you have Shopify, you probably have this particular platform for your chat or business collaborations. Microsoft Teams. So Skype for Business, now part of Microsoft Teams. This is a great model uh, for video conferencing. Um, you can use a desktop app, mobile app, web browser, version of Skype to easily video chat online with a client or in a group. This is something that many of us use internationally um, because it's just easier to Skype um, between countries. Now, WhatsApp has a great platform for international uh, conversations as well. Google Hangouts, as I said, uh, if you had Google for any period of time, you've probably used Google Hangouts. Um, great platform. I have nothing negative to say about it. Uh, it's free to use, appeals to value for cost segment of our evaluation. Uh, Google Hangouts is also has a robust enough to satisfy most small business needs, uh, and it's easy to get started using. So, I mean, you can't go wrong there. And it has a lot of integrations uh, with other platforms. Driver, I've never heard of it. Uh, unlimited voice and video calls with call tools that include one-click connection, high-quality audio, screen sharing, and more. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's a video conferencing platform. Um, great for forums, teams, chat software, news streaming, task management, has encryption, um, and it has integrations with uh, Google Sheets and Forms, Gmail, Chrome plugin, Slack, Twitter, Dropbox, uh, Hubert, and Zapier. Wow, that's uh, a great lineup. So, but these are some of the great uh, programs that are out there, the softwares that are out there. Some of them you can go right online and jump in. Some of them you have to have a password and uh, pin and, 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 you know, download some software. But that's okay. I mean, 
it's not that hard. I mean, even with, with Zoom, after I got the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And that's why they have over 700% increase in business is because of the ease. Nobody wants to, to click on this and download that. And I had some challenges with, you know, even with WebEx, you know, Cisco, initially they had, you know, you, you, you're downloading and, and they, but their, their platform was set up for business. It wasn't for your everyday webinar. Um, and they have a whiteboard included as well. So you can, you can draw on that while you're talking to somebody. Um, collaborations are really awesome in, in WebEx. So I recommend that highly. Um, so yeah, I mean, Zoom is, is the bomb. Uh, they will always kind of be a leader in this segment. So uh, can't, can't really say anything bad uh, for the top dog like that. And uh, I think, with that, we have almost completed what we wanted to do. So I, I want to close this out. And as you know, I'm a big proponent of the future of work and you know collaboration, remote work, gig economy, uh, where people take their entrepreneurship, uh, uh, you know, talents and express them, you know, actually, you know, create something that nobody can take away from you. Build a business, you know, you have ideas, you know you have ideas, and you've probably come up with really awesome ways to do something different. Um, and I recommend that you go ahead and explore that. So real quick, uh, previously I did a video, I think it was number 23, episode 23, and I talked about fourth industrial revolution. People want to know, are robots going to take my job? Well, to be honest with you, no, not really. Uh, if you study the future of work, you will understand how vital smart people are to um, the future of work. And so real quick, uh, let me highlight just a couple of things. Lifelong learning is, is one. And I'll, I'll, I'll go over this because I've extended this out for another 10 particular um, slides, you know, where we're going to talk about growth of networks. And, you know, what's interesting about this one is the number of mobile subscriptions is greater than the number of people. Yeah, just like guns. I mean, there's more mobile subscriptions, more phones that are working than there are people on the planet. It's crazy. And I got four phones myself, so I get it. Trend shaping the future of work. So we talk about, we take information from a guy named Stefan Casariel, co-chair of the Council on the Future of Work, Gender, and Education. Um, very, very important information there. We also talk about education breakout of their silos. Um, we also talk about Cities will compete against other cities in the war for top talent in the future. In the future, why would it be cities versus companies? Because you're the talent. You don't have to have an office. You just need to have a computer and a wireless connection. And with 5G, you can hook up anywhere, anytime, any place. So cities will be competing for the best of the best. And so you will be in the middle of that competition. So I like to wrap it up today. And we're going to get into um, something that I call the fifth digital reaction under workonomics. As you know, I am thrilled about having a conversation that deals with the future of work and preparing ourselves for what's coming uh, from an education perspective, upskilling perspective, um, understanding where you fit in this big picture. There is a revolution and you need to be prepared to win. Blockchain, 5G, robotic process automation, AI, you need to understand how those fit into whatever career or job or space that you're in. And if you're working from home because of this pandemic, 
then you have an opportunity to study, to learn, to get those tools because it's your your time. You have to look at the opportunity that you've been given in the last two months and probably the next two or three months with this particular pandemic and the results of it until they get the antibodies, until they get the test out there, you're not going back to an office. You're not sitting next to other people unless you choose to do so. And well, you know how that could turn out. So at the end of the day, I implore you to learn as much as you can about the future of work. Give me a call, send me an email. Let's talk. Um, I love talking about this. I, I think it's great. And there's so much more information to go through. I could do a two hour talk on this, but I just only hit on beyond face to face part two of the future of work from my previous episode on the triple effect. I'm Rashid Hill and I am the founder of LG Coaching Solutions and Strategies. I am the author of the personal and professional development guide called eight ways to be 10 times better. It's our Another recent privacy concern involves Zoom bombing, where a malicious user will join a Zoom meeting and show explicit or disturbing images. This could be bad for business, since many schools are relying on Zoom to conduct classes. And if these obscene, violent interruptions become more frequent, administrators might seek another platform. There's going to be a debate out there about content on Zoom, right? And and are they going to be responsible for monitoring and controlling the content that, that happens on, on the platform in the way, again, like a Twitter, right, has an entire army of people who are dedicated to monitoring content.